Hello, welcome to the Word of Hope podcast. We believe it is the Word of God that changes and strengthens our lives in such a way that we are able to effectively fulfill our assignment and manifest heaven right here on earth. It is our goal to lead you to a place of confidence and hope as you help others progress and elevate. Thanks for tuning in. Now, let's prepare our hearts for today's message. philosopher by the name of Norman Vincent Peale. Um, this is what he said. Listen to what he said. He introduced a polarizing concept concerning the value and the potential of the mind. Watch what he said about the potential and the value of your mind. He says this, the mind is a shapeable force. It has the ability to emancipate or incarcerate. That's what the mind does. Amen. The mind has the ability to either lock you up or set you free. That's the mind. The next thing he said, he further says that every talent, every gifting, all potential within an individual is at the mercy of their mind. I don't care what you're capable of doing. If your mind does not agree with that potential, then that potential will not be released. Amen. Amen. Listen to me clearly. Members of heavenly hope, men, uh, citizens of the kingdom of God, church folk and all. Amen. Listen to me clearly. I don't care if God gave you the potential. It will not be released if your mind doesn't get in agreement with it. Amen, Bishop. Now, it's supposed, I know what we think, but God gave it to me. It's supposed to be able to just flow. God can't even make it flow out of you if your mind, oh, that's good right there. That's good right there, amen. So you mean to tell me that the enemy can cause potential in me to be stopped up in me all be, by, by allowing me to get hung up with strongholds in my thought life that it can't flow. It can't flow now. An entire kingdom on the inside of me. God didn't say that the kingdom of heaven was something that you visit. He says, no, the kingdom of heaven is not here nor there, but the kingdom of heaven is within. I walk around with a whole kingdom in me that I can't release because of stinking thinking. I can't release because of thought patterns that are disruptive, that are hindering the flow. Glory to God. I have potential to not only change my situation, but to change situations in the lives of everybody around me that can't flow because my mind won't let it. Yes, sir. Come on. That's good right there. Amen. So therefore, if this is true, that the mind is a shapeable force and it has the ability to emancipate and incarcerate and that every potential, all ability, all giftings, all talents and all of that is at the mercy of your mind, then capturing our thought life or capturing our soul should become a priority in the church. Jesus. We want to speak in tongues. On, we want to shout out. We want to do that. We want to fall out. We want to do all that. And that's fine. That's fine. All of that is a part of the walk, and I understand that. We want to do everything that pertains to a church service without doing nothing to our thinking. And we think that we're going to be effective. No, you'll be effective as a church member. But you will not be effective as a citizen and ambassador of this kingdom, representing the kingdom of God when you leave church, if you don't do nothing with your mind. And the church said, Amen. 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 Glory to God. So we begin to define strongholds, and we have four different definitions for strongholds. And we're not going to go into those definitions on the screen right now, but we will get a chance to go into it. Uh, strongholds were, uh, number one, it was a safe place. Um, I believe that was the Strong's Exhaustive Concordia that, uh, Concordia that defined it as a straight place, to, uh, a safe place. The Greek word was okaruma. And a safe place means that the enemy, Josh, had... Had, had fortified his presence in your life by hiding behind your thought life that developed into habits. If you want to know where the enemy is, if you're looking for him in your marriage, he's on the other side of your habits. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Glory to God. Are y'all with me right now? Are y'all with I've been gone. I'm back. Hey, man. I'm back. Hey, I'm back. I'm back and I'm fresh. Hey, man. I'm fresh. I'm fresh like I just got a fresh line. Although I don't have no hair, I'm fresh. Amen. Glory to God. I'm revived and everything. I'm ready. Dion, I'm ready. Amen. Glory to God. If I want to find out where the enemy is, he's on the other side of my habits. He's on the other side. If I want to find out where the enemy is in my finances, I'm going to tell you where he's at. He's on the other side of your financial habits. Come on. Amen. And he knows this. The reason why he cushions himself, he puts a stronghold, he takes, 
He takes something and, and glory to God, this whole thing moves. And, and he said it's supposed to. Amen. There it is. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Well, the whole thing. He sets it up between. Come on, first lady, stand up here. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Stand up here right quick. And he knows this here. You're not going to be able to reach me. Come on close. Amen. Glory to God. Stick your hands out. Amen. On the short arms. Amen. You can't reach me. Come on. Stick them out. Amen. Glory to God. Stick them out first, lady. You can't reach me from over there. And we can't get rid of what we can't get to. Come on. Amen. Come on. I don't care how you want to get rid of the enemy in your life and everything else. I mean, we can't. I'm probably going to go over time tonight. That's all right. Go ahead. Let me just go ahead and say that. I'm probably going to go over this clock tonight. Amen. Glory to God. I've been gone. I shouldn't be able to violate it tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So go ahead and reach out. Amen. Glory to God. So you're trying to get rid of him out of your house, out of your marriage, out of your money, out of your health, out of everything else. When he's saying, no, 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 you're not going to be able to get to me because you won't deal with those thoughts that are in your head. You won't deal with certain thought patterns that I've established to fortify my presence in your life. So watch this. The way I think helps strengthen his presence. He ain't going nowhere, nowhere. nowhere. if I don't deal with this. Mm. Oh, it's quiet. Yes. Thank you so much, First Lady. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I don't use her for much illustration, but she, she, was, she was a, a beautiful van of white men. Come on now. <laughs> Better than that. Though. Amen. Glory to God. Now, the next definition was the center of a covert operation. A stronghold was the center of a covert operation. In other words, it, it was an in disguise, undercover hmm. operation. His presence in your life is not the thoughts. You can't recognize stronghold by just saying, that's a bad thought. They don't show up with a, with a, with a, with a, with a bad thought tag on them. They don't show up. You know how Miss America show up and he let you know where they're from? I mean, or Miss Universe, they let you know where they're from. They're from Columbia or, or from, from, from America and they had that tag on them. Well, bad thought don't show up with that on them. It don't show up and say bad thought. In fact, it camouflages itself as a thought that you begin to justify. That you begin to say, well, I only think like that because you did this. Mm -hmm. Come on. All right. Glory to God. If I wouldn't have went through this, then I wouldn't think like this. Yes. And that's a covert operation where the thought blends in with other thoughts and you begin to categorize it as a good thought. Yeah. Amen. Ah, let me move on. Amen. I'm still in a recap. It is the place where human confidence is imposed. It is the place where your experience begins to cut in on what God said. I don't believe in healing because I experienced it. Come on. Although I have. Yes, sir. My faith is not at the mercy of my experiences. I believe in healing because the word said it. Come on, come on. So I don't let my experiences cut in on what God say. And if it does, I pray God reveal it, expose it, point it out. See, you got to be willing to get so real with God that you say, God, I just want to be better. Somebody say amen. 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 You got to, if you want him, God is light. And light is going to shine on dark areas. Amen. amen. I need you to shine on areas where the enemy has been hiding. Yes. Hiding places. Amen. Watch the next definition. It was proud reasoning stirred by demonic arguments. If the enemy began to argue points in your mind and he began to stir up these strongholds that, that it began to, it, it, it just, it just, it just, it remind you of what happened. And the enemy know that I was there when what happened to you happened to you. So I know that thing is still there. So what I do, I just cause a demonic thought to show up in your head from the end, from me. I will give you a demonic thought that'll stir up that thing that you're hurting from. And now you can't keep friends because you'll run your own friends off Woo. from a friend that betrays you in your past. Come on. Look, are y'all with me right now? And God is saying, I have assigned people to your life. I have divinely assigned people to your life. I have brought connections that are from heaven. And now these people can't stay in your life because every time you get you get touched, you get offended, and you run them off because the enemy is sitting back stirring up with the demonic. They don't trust you. They don't love you. They don't want you there. They don't do that. And before you know it, you get all worked up on the inside, and you respond from the enemy. Are y'all with me right now? Am I preaching in this house? Yes, you are. All right. So now that we're done with that, I want you to write down. This is going to be our definition for strongholds going throughout the rest of this message. It's going to be a simplified. All of those were uh, definitions. And this is just going to be a simplified definition of stronghold. Right. Write it down real quick. It is disruptive and destructive thought patterns that are not consistent with the word of God. 
You're not gonna be able to say, I don't, 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 I don't know what a stronghold is no more. I didn't know there was a stronghold. If you don't know the words, you won't know. But the moment you begin to learn the word, you'll be able to recognize thought patterns that are not consistent with the word of God. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Come on, somebody say stronghold. 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 Watch what the stronghold is. Disruptive and destructive thought patterns that are not consistent with the word of God. Amen. Look at somebody real quick. Just look at them real quick and fix your eyes on them. And with authority, I want you to say this. What does the word say? What does the word say? Amen. Come on, you're not saying it with no authority. Find somebody else. Fix somebody else. Yo, that, your neighbor ain't want to do it. Look at somebody else and say, what does the word say? Now, that's what you should be doing in your head every time a thought show up. Every time a thought show up, you should say, what does the word say? What does the word say? Because I know what my mind is telling me to do. I know what the thought patterns are telling me to do. You ever heard this saying that I ain't got to be around you. I'll be able to deal with you with a long handle. Glory to God. God don't have a long handle spoon. Ooh, glory to God. I know what you think. I want to keep my enemies as far away as possible. When God's way of dealing, what does the word say? The word says they're so close that they can sit at the table with you. That God prepares a table before you in the presence. Yes, sir. That's what Glory said. to God. Somebody say, what does the word say? What does the word say? That's what the word says. Glory to God. I don't know what it is. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lance, I don't know what it is. I'm about to cut everything off in a minute. Amen. You got a deacon Lewis. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pray the Holy Ghost if you don't know what you're doing. He'll tell you. Amen. Somebody say, what does the word say? What does the word say? I know you've been hurt in your past. Amen. Glory to God. I know people have let you down, have hung you out to dry, have drug your name in the mud, have done all these things, but you can't stop loving and trusting people just because of something that happened. What does the word say? Well, God, I'm going to need help doing this. Come on, somebody say, I'm going to need help. Glory to God. Amen. All right, so watch this. Watch this. I got to bring in disruptive. Read that definition back to me. And it is... And Come on, we can read it together. We can do better than that. A stronghold is that are not consistent with the word of God. That are not consistent with the word of God. Satan's goal is to access, seize, control, mental territory in your mind. That's what we talked about, our last thought that we left off with last time I was ministering, Dr. King. We're finally done. We, well, we, we, 13 minutes left to say on the clock, but we're bypassing it today. I did all that on the review. Amen. We just reviewed right then. So, so watch this here. It says this. The Satan's goal is to access, seize, and control. Come on, say access. Seize. Seize. And control. And control. That's what he wants to do. He wants to access, seize, and control mental territory in your mind. That's what we left off at. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4 real quick. He wants to access, seize, and control mental territory in your mind. He wants to access, seize, and control mental territory in your mind. Ephesians chapter 4. Turn there. Mm -hmm. Access, seize, and control. He wants to get in. Take over and then expand. Listen to me clearly, everybody. Satan is not going to be comfortable with the corner lot that he get in your head. He's not going to be okay with that. I got me a nice little corner spot. Ain't nobody going to bother me. Ain't going to bother nobody. No, if he gets a corner lot in your mind, he's automatically thinking, I want the rest of it. I want to expand, and we're going to find out what exactly does that mean. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26. Verse 26. Watch what it says. You got it? Yes, sir. Watch what it says. Be ye angry and flash out. <laughs> it don't say that? No, sir. All right. Listen to what the scripture is saying. Let, let, me, let me come through and tell you what it's saying. This scripture is really saying this, Lance. I don't have a problem with you getting mad. I have a problem with your anger controlling you. So your anger should not control your behavior. All right? So you can get mad all you want. Listen, I say you can get mad all you want. That's what the words say. The words say that. I'm mad. Yeah, you can be mad. Amen. But watch what it says after that. You remember we said what does the word say, right? Watch verse 26. 
Be ye angry and sin not. Let the sun, let not the sun go down on your wrath. So God said, I don't have a problem with you having an issue with somebody else. I have a problem if you let that issue linger. Come on. Listen, and what they did to you does not justify you having, uh, holding on to the issue. Come on. Amen. Listen, somebody say, what does the word say? But I just need time to process this. God said, you got all day. You got all day. Come on. Married couples, can I help us? You can be mad all you want, but when it's time to go to bed, pull it together, forget them. Well, I ain't going to be able to do that. What does the word say? I know why you can't do it, because the enemy has, again, pushed these thoughts. Let me let that wheel up on there right quick. Hey, I can move it now. He has rolled what happened last time between you and him and said, you're not going to be able to forgive if you don't deal with this. Yeah. You have to deal with the thought patterns that are disruptive. Let's talk to married people for a second. If you're married, say, I'm married. I'm married. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Some people didn't say it with enthusiasm, but that's fine. You see it up. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Get to the end of your rope, tie it in a knot, and hold on. Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. That's all right. Amen. All right, so watch it. I'm married. Watch these married people. Do you remember times when the marriage will just, maybe you remember the times when the marriage just fly high and yeah. it would just be, I'm talking about just you and I. Y'all remember that in the marriage? Yes, yeah. The, you remember that you had moments that, that flying moment, all of a sudden the plane just fell out the sky? Mm -hmm. yes, you had those moments? Yes, anybody? Yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes, That's disruption. Okay. It was flowing and something disrupted it. And this definition of a stronghold says it was in your head. Ah, come on, huh? what? Come on. What? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Disruptive and destructive thought patterns that are in operation. So what verse 26? 26 ends with this. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Look at your neighbor and say, what does the word say? You don't get to change that, remember. Your stronghold is not consistent with what the words say. So if you have a thought in your head that justify you staying that way, that didn't come from God. Come on. Amen. Come on. What? Are y'all with me? Yes. So watch verse 27. Verse 27 says, neither give place to the devil. Now I got to now, now finally where I want to be today. Now the word place comes from the Greek word topos, T-O-P-O-S. And that's where we get the word topography. Topography, as I taught last uh, 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 session or last time I taught on this subject, that topography is the study of ge geographical area, areas. It is when uh, you lay out maps and things of that nature. You cover regions and territory. And that word topos in the Greek actually means this. The word place means region, territory, or location. Region, territory, or location. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. All right, come on, say it with me. Say region, region territory, territory, or location. Or location. So the scripture actually says this, Deacon Demetrius. Neither give Satan a region. Come on. That's right. A territory or a location. Yes, sir. It is talking about mental territory. His goal is to get in and then expand his territory in your mind. So what does it mean to expand? In mental territory. Turn to Matthew 22 real quick. Real quick. Now I'm going I'm to start this, this. This whole message is built on that right there. Yeah, that's one of these, this one of these lessons, Brittany. You want to take notes on that. One of these things. You know, you have them certain servants that say, God, boy, you spoke to me today on how to deal with them. Yes. You to them today. I'm them. It's me. You got it? Yes, sir. All right. So. Watch this. Miss Derry ain't supposed to laugh. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. I'm telling you, I, I didn't. Matthew 22. You know who owns the territory uh, uh, where Mala Weedan sit on? Uh, not anymore. Master P. He bought the territory. He bought, he bought that land where Mala Weedan sit on. He bought that. Years ago, but he bought it. But prior to Master P, uh, it was a particular ministry. Uh, since I'm alive, I guess I don't want to call any names. It was a particular ministry in Baton Rouge that owned that entire territory. In fact, 
You'll be riding down Blue Bunny and you'll say, they own all of that? You're talking about the mall. Then when you leave the mall, they have state buildings over there. And you say, they own all of that. And then on this side, where they have Ketchum and they have the uh, new hotel and all of that, they own all of that. Then you get down there where the church and the school is, and like they own all of that. And by the, by, by the time you know it, you're down all the way to Perkins Road and you didn't realize they own everything on that entire street. Yes, sir. Sure enough. That's how I was when I didn't think I had strongholds. Come on. Oh, everything on God just took me through a walk in my mind, and he was like, that's what the enemy set up. So, okay, I got to deal with it. That's what the enemy set up. Oh, over here, too. Like, that's what the enemy said. Over here, too. Look on the other side. Over here. I was talking about before I realized, I looked around and said, God, I'm surrounded by thought patterns that didn't come from you. Loving, speaking tongue, fall out, give to other people and everything. And I was only good when I was measuring myself against somebody else. Yes, sir. Glory to God that's good is like that. Only when I, when, when, I, when, I, when, I went, when I didn't have nobody to measure with, I began to realize, God, I need help. Not only just help, help my head. Watch this. You got Matthew 22? I said all this to get time to turn there. Verse 36. Watch this. Master. Which is the greatest commandment in the law? And this is Jesus responding in verse 37. And he said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. He said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. I want you to write down this point tonight. This will be our only point. Everything else is going to be diving into more information about the, uh, the, 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 the territory in our thinking. So I want you to write down this point tonight. It's going to be important. Based on that scripture, it says, true submission, true submission cannot take place without mental cooperation. I don't care how you say I submit to God. Paul wrote it and said it this way, that Israel has a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. If I don't get my mind involved, it won't be true submission. If I don't get my mind involved, it's not true submission. I don't care how much I spend money on you. If my mind ain't in the marriage, then it ain't no true submission to the marriage. Am I right? Yeah. You know how the song used to be? Your body over here? Yeah, but your mind somewhere. But your mind on the other side of town? How y'all know that stuff? Do <laughs> you see that right there? That, 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 that's, that's, that's the thing God is saying in this scripture. Watch how he breaks it down. Now, I didn't think he needed to break down, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. I didn't think he needed to do that because the heart and the mind, the heart in some scriptures means spirit, but in here it is actually meaning the focus, the will of the, of the soul. It's talking about focus. So I didn't think he needed to bring up the heart and the mind. If you say soul, you cover all the ground. Right. He could have easily just said, love the Lord thy God with all thy soul. He could have easily said that. Number one, he didn't say love him with your spirit. Because your spirit is in love with him because he put that love in your spirit. Amen. So you don't have a problem. Look at somebody say, I don't have a problem with my spirit. Oh, no. <laughs> the problem with the other two people, the, the flesh and the soul, is not with my spirit. My spirit cool. My spirit cool. But he said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul. So write, write down that word heart real quick. And that word heart actually means focus. That's what it means right there. It's talking about your focus. If you're going to submit to God, you're going to have to submit to him with your focus. You're going to have to be focused on him. You're going to have to be focused on him. All right. So watch this. He says, give me your focus. And the next thing he says, soul, that word soul is affection. That's your affection. He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. That word soul is your affection. It's your emotions. It's, it, it, it's your workup. It is, it, it is, it is, it is that. Oh, I miss you too. It is, it, it is that affection. We want to worship without bringing our affections into it. In other words, you look like a robot when you don't have your heart or have your affection or your soul involved. If you're not focused on him, this is what you look like. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for everything you have done for me. You are good. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Time to go home. God is saying, no, I didn't make you. It's a choice you have to make. So you're going to have to choose. This is what affection means. You want me. Oh, Lord, I need you. There's nobody else. God said, I know you need me, but do you want me? Come 
in the midst of other choices. Glory to God. Do you want me? Hallelujah. Are y'all with me right now? Let me go a little bit further. The mind. The mind means the thought life. It is your thoughts, your thinking. So he says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart focus, all your soul affection, all your mind thought life. This is what he was saying to him. This is the beauty of worship. He's telling you how to worship. He's not going to make you do nothing. If you're waiting on God to make you do something, you don't know his nature. He's not going to make you do nothing. But he has told you how to get to that place. He says, heart, soul, mind. In other words, focus on me and then love to do it and learn to do it. Come on, come on. Yeah. God, I don't know how to love people that have hurt me. All right. Focus on me. Learn to do it and then love to do it. God, I don't know how to trust you with my, my tithes and offerings when bills are tight. Focus on me. Learn to do it. Love to do it. If you don't love to do it, if that, don't worry, the time is trying to tell me that it's over with and it ain't. Amen. Come on, say the time wrong. Time wrong. Amen. 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 Glory to God. If I don't learn to do it, I won't love to do it. Some of the stuff that we do in church, we don't even like doing it. Because you haven't learned about how it benefits and what it's supposed to be. I mean, we don't like, we got to beg people to stand up, give God some praise. Come on, the praise team is singing, get up on your feet, lift your hands and doing that. You don't, I'm not over there, ain't nobody begging me to do nothing. The reason I'm doing it is because I have now learned what comes with me extending myself to God in worship. And I love doing it now. Hey Amen. I was the one that wanted to sit back and be cool doing praise word. You know, you, you only got your hands in there all the way, man. You just kind of... You know, every God is good, you look good, Lord. You know, you got to stand hard, turn my feet like this. You know, Lord. You know what I'm saying, Lord? You, you cool with me. <laughs> that, I mean, but once you learn to do it, then you begin to fall. It's progressive. You're focused, you learn, you love. Glory to God, that's good. That's good, y'all. So now let's talk about mental real estate. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about what does it mean for the enemy if you give him place to expand himself in your thinking. What does that literally mean? Now, let me tell you what that means. We're going to break this down. Now, this is exciting to me. Uh, my wife, uh, it wasn't a geek. What you call me, baby? A nerd. She said, you're such a nerd. Look at you. I'm talking about, boy, I get all excited. We was on vacation. I was like, bang. Check this out. I mean, I was just, she was like, okay, that's cool, but you're such a nerd. You're getting excited about this stuff. So now I'm going to show you. I'm going to, Ms. Deborah, I'm going to use science to prove this scripture of expanding in your mind. Go for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the actual study of the brain and to show you in scripture what it means for the enemy to expand his territory in your thinking. Can I show you? I told you this ain't going to be your average stronghold message or series. We literally got to know what it means to have strongholds in these areas and how to pull them down. So let's go ahead very quickly. All right. Here, here, there, there are. First of all, the, the, the brain is subdivided into four sections. Yeah, yeah, she's a nurse, so she got excited. They got some nurses over here. They all start smiling and everything. They want to pull out the stethoscope. What is this thing called? They want to pull that thing out, whatever. That thing. Yeah. Speak mama that thing. thing. Yeah, speak mama nine. They want to pull that out. Yeah. Get their needles and stuff together and everything. So I so you heard her that, come on! This is my field right here. All right, we're going to show you what it means. The, the brain is subdivided into four sections. Four, di four different sections. And we're going to talk about those sections right quick. Now, those are the, those are the sections right there in the bottom. It's actually um, uh, the, the cerebellum. Yeah, it, it, it's not really, uh, the, uh, not really the, the, the section, but that goes into the nerve portion of the spinal. That's what it goes into. So I want to talk about those four top sections, the subdivision of the brain. I want to tell you the first one. You need to write them down because here's the, 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 the first mental real estate. That's what we're talking about, right? Yes, sir. 
Okay, can I teach this? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. The first part is called the frontal lobe. You can write it down. You can see it on there. Frontal lobe. That's the first part of the brain. The frontal lobe. You got it? Yes. The frontal lobe. Now, I'm going to tell you what takes place on the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is pointing at it. It's, it's the part of the brain, the front part of the brain, that covers up the majority of the uh, of the top of your head. Now, if you got a head like me, you got a big frontal lobe. Come on. If, 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 you, if you don't, then you just deal with the frontal lobe you Sorry. got. Amen. Glory to God. But but, but the frontal lobe, right, right, right there, is that part of it. Come on. Somebody said that part. That part right there. Watch what happens with the frontal lobe. Here are the areas of the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is the place where your experiences are filed. Your experiences or revelation. It is the place where your morals are, your values are, or your behavior is uh, 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 convinced. You convince yourself of behavior in your frontal lobe. Come on, somebody say frontal lobe. Right quick, right quick, right quick. I, I got I gotta teach you. You know my time up. I gotta teach you. I was, why am I so excited about this bird lady? She said she don't know. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I like I like this for before, right? It's the reason I love it. I love it. Watch the frontal lobe. It is why watch how good this is. This is getting good. This is getting good, dude. This is getting good. Just watch it. Watch it. It is the first thing that takes place in your frontal lobe is what? Experience. Experience or revelation. That takes place. When the light bulb goes off, it goes off in that part right there. In your spirit, your spirit then begins to relate to your soul and right there in your head lights up. Now watch this. This is going to get very good. Experience is filed in a cabinet in your frontal lobe. Revelation is filed in a cabinet in your frontal lobe. Your brain can't tell the difference from experience or revelation. That's good right there. So you mean to tell me that I can go through something and that thing be so real to me. But then God can show me something and if it become real revelation, my brain will respond like it happened. So now I don't have to wait on God doing it. If you can just reveal it, glory to God. My mind will respond like it. I'll start living like I got it already because my frontal lobe embraced it. Yo, I don't know what to do with my body right now. I want to kick some. I want to dance. I want to do. That's good stuff right there. So watch this. So now, if something happens to me, it is the place in my mind where I declare it as real. And not only as real, I hold it as the standard for everything else. So if I'm violated as a child and molested as a child, or if I'm abused as a person, or if I'm neglected as this, I file it in my mind, Angela, and when I file it in my mind, I now begin to hold it as the standard for my morals, my values. My values. Come on. Because I have morals that I'll never do this and I'll never do that. But let the right experience get filed. Oh God. And now I begin to lower my morals and my values based on what I got in the file cabinet. Somebody said strong hope. Oh. Yeah, I mean, women, women, there are, there are a lot of hurt women in the world. Mm -hmm. A lot of hurt women. And the reason why there are a lot of hurt women, I didn't say hurt girls. Come on now. There are a lot of hurt women in the world. And the reason why there are a lot of hurt women in the world is because they trusted themselves with boys. And as a boy, I'm a man myself. So as a boy, I hurt women myself. As a boy, I wasn't responsible with their trust. And now somebody else has to deal with the damage I caused. Y'all ain't going to be real with me in this church today. So now the experience is there and they don't give themselves. Their morals have been lower. Their values have been lower. And now their behavior don't line up. They were, they were, they were loving. They were caring. They were giving. They were everything. And I trusted you with everything until that experience got put in that file cabinet. And when that experience got there, I no longer. This is the place. In your mind, where you declare it as real and the standard for everything else. Your frontal lobe. Can I teach this? Yes, teach this. So, let's say the enemy gets into your frontal lobe. Remember, don't give him place because he wants territory. territory amen. So, after he gets in the frontal lobe, he's not going to be okay with you just going through it. Amen. Come on, now. You hear me, Daniel? He don't want you. 
to say, well, I went through that. And he said, well, I just stay right here in your experiences. But he wants to go into the next part. Once you leave the frontal lobe, you go into the parietal lobe. This is, this is, ooh, this is good to me. Ooh, this is good to me. What is the parietal lobe? This is what the parietal lobe is. Go ahead. This is what it is. It is the place. Let me go back. Let me go back. Now you got the frontal lobe. Then you have this portion right there in the back. Right there in the back. So watch the parietal lobe. This is the place where there is perception, where you begin to identify perception and potential in you. Perception is how you see you, Keon. You got me, Lane? That's how you see you. Come on, say this with me. Say perception, perception. is how I see me. How I see me. Perspective, Perspective is how I see everything else. So my perception, it takes place in my parietal lobe, and I begin to identify my potential in my parietal lobe. Now watch this first, lady. If he gets in my frontal lobe through my experiences, now my morals, my values leave. Now that there, but he's not going to be content with you just going through that. He's going to say, let me go over here in this other lobe and now begin to allow what happened in your frontal lobe or what's filed in your frontal lobe to affect how you see you. Yeah. This is the place in this parietal lobe. It is the place where you make promises to yourself. I will never go yes. through that again. Y'all yes. better talk to me right now. This is good to me. Remember you say, I never, you will never be able to. I asked you for something. You didn't want to help me out. You will never be able to tell me no again. Why? Because in this lobe, I said, I'll never ask nobody for nothing else again. So now what is happening in the frontal lobe is bleeding over to the parietal lobe and now it's controlling how I see me. It is also the place where I begin to identify with potential. So if the experience that I went through in the frontal lobe gets over in the parietal lobe, he's expanding himself. Now it really begins to control how I see me. Not only how I see me, this is the place where I say, I should go back to school. I can't do that. Come on. Cool. Somebody can say, you need to go apply for the job. They got an opening over here. And they can say, I can't do that. You need to do this, but I can't do this. My experiences are bleeding over into another lobe. Do you see him expanding himself, yeah. taking mental territory now? So now he's fortifying himself in different lobes. Well, let's go into the next lobe. This is the temporal lobe. Come on, first lady, write this thing down, the temporal lobe. This is what the temporal lobe is. The temporal lobe is the place... It is the auditory um, 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 uh, place of your, uh, of your brain. This is the place, this is, this is cool to me. This is the place where your words and your hearing receive signals. I'm still just, in, this is just part two of this series, so you know I'm feeling I'm building right now. I can't wait till Sunday, so I, I, I had to get through today to get to what I'm gonna talk about Sunday. You hear me, Dean? This is the place. Now watch the temporal lobe. He starts in the frontal lobe. You go through something. You have an experience. You have a bad experience. You have a bad thing. You file it in your mind. You begin to lower your standards, lower your morals, lower your value. You begin to change your behavior and everything to fit what you went through, not what God said. Because what you went through becomes the standard for everything else. You got it? Now he takes over in another lobe, and now you begin to see yourself a certain way. You begin to say you can't do certain things. You begin to uh, identify with or uh, misidentify your potential, and now he bleeds over into this, this lobe. Now the stuff that come out of your mouth. Come on now. Do y'all see him at work now? Yes, sir. The stuff that come out of your mouth, glory to God. You can't, we say this in counseling, you can't hide where it hurts. Before you know it, Danielle, I mean, you just uh, people look fine until you touch an area. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on, come on. Yeah, when you touch that area, you, you, yeah. it just come out. Am I right? It just come out. You can't hide it. You can't hide it. You might, you might, it might be something cool and be like this. I mean, they might love God and everything. They're like, girl, we ought to, we ought to go and have something, a uh, 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 barbecue at our, at our house. Let's go have a barbecue. I ain't gonna have nobody at my house. <laughs> Why not? 
Last time I had somebody at my house, they came and they broke in my house. The so last time I had somebody at my house, I came home and they were at my house. And now that experience becomes the standard for everything else. And now no, out of my mouth becomes that. And when those words come out, the hearing come out. And this is what me and my wife were talking about. Today we were talking about here at the hospital. We were talking about that. Something could be said. We can hear the same thing, but not hear it the same way. Amen. Because what happened, because my standard for how I heard it. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Like, like somebody could say something, I mean, saying this to you and saying this to me are two different things. It's like, man, I'm trying to tell you I'm from the street. You're saying, you might have heard, I mean, he's from the street, he need help. I heard, he don't think you're from the street. <laughs> Glory to God. Y'all y'all laughing at, don't laugh at me. I, that's what I heard, I heard, man, I'm from the street. Man, you ain't the only one from the street, both of us from the street. Now what we do now? You see that right there? Somebody say strongholds. You see how I can't get moving and stuff? Slide down with myself and everything. I mean, the, the, the stronghold in your mind that is working against you, hindering you. And it, it is simple as this. First lady, can I can I use you as an example? I, mean, I don't want to I don't want to use us, but let, let's go ahead and use it. It is something as simple as talking loud and say, man, you tripping. And she see hand moving and say, hold up, man, what you what? <laughs> you I was in a fighting relationship. Well, she tried not to set her feet. <laughs> Have a seat, first lady. Relax. Amen. Have a seat. Have a seat. Amen. I should have used Lance and Danielle. Amen. Glory to God. Deborah and Coma. Amen. Glory to God. Dig and Jess. Amen. I should have used them. Louis and Angela. <laughs> Boy, it's me. Well, let's be getting the mood. Amen. The, the, the point that I'm making is that it is in this load that words come out. I hear a certain way. But I also begin to assess and identify relationships in this load. Yes, sir. This is the load where I begin to declare somebody as a friend or an enemy. Mm -hmm. In the parietal load. In the temporal load. In the temporal load. Thank you. It is in the frontal load that I go through the experiences. It is in the parietal load that I begin to see me a certain way and begin to assess my ability based on how I see me, based on what I went through. Then it comes in this load when I begin to speak loosely, hear, hear, um, hear the wrong way, uh, hear uh, 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 in, a, in, a, in a dysfunctional manner, and then I begin to misfile people based on my experience. Somebody say stronghold. Our last load that we're going to look at is the occipital load. Oc Typical load. My wife made sure that I pronounced this correctly because she, she didn't want me to uh, get up here and embarrass her. That's the only reason she showed up tonight. She was at hospital. She was like, I gotta come there to make sure he don't say that one word wrong. She sat through this whole sermon to make sure I said occipital correctly. Amen. 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 Look at her, she's proud of me now. Amen. So I was gonna miss her, but I just feel like he was gonna get that wrong. And I need to be right there to cheer my baby on if he get it right. Amen. I'll be waiting on my stupid snack later. Amen. I got it right. Occipital. Y'all leave that alone. Just, just focus on the word. <laughs> just focus on the word. Occipital. This is what the occipital lobe is. It is the place where vision takes place or sight. That's where the ocular um, term comes from. Vision or sight. But it's also the place, watch this, where imagination is. Can I teach for the past, for the next few minutes? Yes. If it gets in my frontal lobe through experiences and stuff that I go through, this is what he's banking on. He's banking on one thing. I'm telling you, I, well, let me just walk through the process first. If he gets in through, I need four people. I need four people. I need four people. I need four people. Come on, fellas. Come on. Come on. I need four. Four. That's three. There's four right here. Amen. It's here. It's here. Then just stand up, line up right here. Amen. Four people. We'll walk through the loads. If he gets in the frontal load, if he gets in through my experiences, then in my experiences, I begin to either, uh, or through my experiences, I begin to measure my standard of behavior, my morals and my values based on what I'm going through. 
Can I, can I, can I, can I teach for a second? This is the load that justify lying on your taxes. And it's okay because of, you see how hard I'm struggling. Because if you had more than enough money, this load, and you weren't experiencing a struggle, this load would say, I'm not going to carry no other, nobody else's kids that ain't mine. That's what that load would say. But based on the experience, my morals and my values begin to lower. Y'all quiet. So, so now, brother, if you would, we, we're strong, man, so we're okay. we hold, hold, grab another brother hand. Grab his hand. He bleed into the other load, and it's in the parietal load. Then now, based on what you have experienced, you begin to see yourself. I guess I, I'd be done it, done it way. Amen. Glory to God. Now, in this load, you begin to see yourself a certain way, and now you begin to base your potential on what you can do off of what you experienced in this load. Now, how you see yourself goes over into the uh, uh, temporal lobe, and now you begin to release words based on how you see you, based on what you went through. Are y'all following it now? So what you went through begins to control how you see, and how you see begins to control what you say. And what you say now begins to bleed over into how you see or what you see. Yes, sir. Come on, you're supposed to grab hands as we go. And the enemy is never going to be satisfied with you just going through it. Because he wants all of it. He, want, he, want, he wants to expand himself. Neither give place to the devil. That's why. Let go ahead. That's why you get mad in this load. Somebody did something based on what they do. Before the sun go down. Come on. Can I, can I teach on the brain right quick? I'm, I'm, I'm talking medically now. I'm talking science-wise. Amen. The brain, watch this. The brain through the day is a working process. Thinking. It's going to think through day and night. When you awake or you sleep, your brain is going to think. But through the day, it is working, processing. At night, it is sorting and filing. Don't let the sun go down on what happened. Because if it do, if you wait till tonight, it's going to spread to the rest of the loaves. And you'll wake up seeing and saying a certain thing. That's scientifically proven. Am I right, nurses? So now that's why it's important. That's why they tell you this. Don't watch a scary movie. Kids, don't watch a scary movie when you go to sleep. Because if you experience that, then you're going to have these other loads that's going to pick up on the scary movie. Before you know it, you're going to wake up screaming off of a shirt that's in the closet thinking it's the boogeyman because that's what he's seen. Stop. Are y'all with me? Yes, so it goes this. You go through this load, this load, this load, this load. How do I beat this process? This is how you beat it. You can't stop yourself from going through stuff. You're going to experience stuff. But Satan is banking on your experience being the biggest thing in your life. So you stop letting your experience be the biggest thing. So you allow revelation to take the place of the experience. I know I went through, but God, you said. And he takes that God, you said, and he hands it to the other load. And when he hands it to that load, come on, I walk through that load with you. And then once it gets to the parietal load, now I begin to see myself based on what the words say, not what I went through. Y'all better stay with me right now. Now I begin to identify my potential with what the words say, Nikisha, not what I went through. Yeah, so now I begin to I begin to realize what the words say. I begin to make promises based on what the words say. God, I promise you, Lord God, that as long as I have breath, I'll lift my voice and bless your name. See, now all of my promises in this load come from what the words say and not what I went through. And as it bleeds into another load, I hand that over. And in that load, now I begin to release in the temporal load, I begin to release words that come from what the words say. I only say what you say. The word of God coming out of my mouth. Next week. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes.
We pray today's message was a blessing to you. If you are interested in partnering with us or supporting with a financial contribution, be sure to visit our website, www.heavenlyhope.church. And remember, it is our God-given assignment to make everywhere we go look more like heaven. Until next time, God bless.